that I want pests in my garden, and I don't mind having pests because the pests draw in the pest predators. You don't always have a perfect balance between the pests and the pest predators. But, you know, you kind of want to keep some pests around. You don't want to completely eradicate pests because you want to keep the predators around. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm just out here in the garden have a look around uh, as the sun goes down. And I thought I'd take a minute to talk about uh, collard greens as an alternative to cabbage. I love cabbage. I like collard greens too. I like them both. But I find I have a heck of a time with pests when it comes to growing cabbage. Um, the main pests I have for cabbage are flea beetles, uh, slugs and snails, and uh, what's called a small white caterpillar. So there's a white butterfly lays eggs on plants like this, on brassicas, on uh, crucifers. Um, the eggs turn into a perfectly camouflaged caterpillar that decimates the plant. Um, I have found, because of the shape of a cabbage, they get in between those folds, and I just can't seem to, to deal with them. Uh, moreover, I don't, I don't find that the, 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 the predatory insects that I have in my garden can't seem to help manage them for me as well. So, I mean, I use three products in my garden um, for pests when I have a really bad problem. I use this stuff called Savers Endol, which is an insecticidal soap with uh, pyrethrin. Um, it's supposed to be, you know, sort of organically responsible, uh, you know, it breaks down, it's okay for an organic type garden as far as I understand it. Um, I use a uh, safer slug and snail killer, which is basically an iron pill, but it gives the slugs and snails an overdose of iron, which kills them. And I use, uh, if I need to, this stuff called BTK, which is a naturally occurring bacteria, but if slugs eat that bacteria, it kills them. <laughs> Not slugs, sorry. If caterpillars eat that bacteria, it's toxic to caterpillars. It's very pest specific. Uh, everything else is, I mean, worms can eat that stuff all day, right? Uh, it's very specific to caterpillars. It's a soil-borne bacteria. Caterpillars don't normally eat soil, so you're spraying it all over your plants, kills the caterpillar. Uh, but it's one of those things, once it's exposed to sunlight, it basically is dead. That bacteria is destroyed in about seven hours of sunlight kills it. So you spray it on in the evening, and the caterpillars eat your plants at night, and that's the end of the caterpillars. Um, anyway, I haven't had to use any of that this year. Um, and I find with the collard greens, all of those pests are way, way less problematic. They are vulnerable when the plants are small and young, like a couple inches high. But for this year, uh, all I needed was the Savers Endol, which is just basically insecticidal soap. I would just come out here every, uh, maybe once a week, and just give them a quick spray, a very light dusting, not even a thorough sort of blast of it. Right, I have, um, I'm of the firm belief that I want pests in my garden and I don't mind having pests because the pests draw in the pest predators and uh, you know over time you're gonna have you don't always have a perfect balance between the pests and the pest predators um, some years are worse than others um, but you know you kind of want to keep some pests around you don't want to completely eradicate pests because you want to keep the predators around um, so when I see things are really bad I'll use a spray like Safer's End All, which is all I needed to use. So, I mean, I did videos last year of my cabbage, and they were kind of kind of sad-looking cabbage, I have to say. But these are nice-looking cabbage. You can see there's there's some pest damage, right? Because I have not been spraying them every single day. Like, once a week, if I see damage, I'll hit them. You can see this one got, got worked on pretty good, right? That's... That's slugger snail. Only slugger snail does that sort of damage, right? So every one of these has had some little peck here or there. I don't mind that, right? Because that gives things like wasps, uh, you know, something to something to attack, right? But these collard greens, I mean, look at them. I mean, a little bit of pest damage is no big deal. These are basically beautiful, healthy uh, collard greens, right? And much more success, much less pest damage than I experienced with the cabbage. Uh, and cuisine-wise, they're not the same thing, but they're close enough that can you can use the one as a substitute uh, for the other. 
right? There's a, when we make uh, curry, there's a dish we make with the curry that has uh, shredded cabbage and coconut and a bit of onion and a bunch of spices. Um, it's kind of sweet tasting. Um, I'm not going to even try to pronounce <laughs> the name of it. Um, but anyway, it's really good and it goes really good with curry. Anyway, you can totally make it with collard greens because <laughs> I've done it. It's not exactly the same, but it's, you know, I mean, who knows what they made this stuff with, you know, a thousand years ago, right? I mean, all these things, you use what you can find. So, and in fact, I find, uh, you know, um, visually, uh, the collard green has a deeper, darker, you know, the cabbage has a sort of like lime green color. The collard, or the cabbage has a lime, light, light green, right? The collard green has a deeper, darker green, especially when you put a bit of salt on it when you cook it. So it's got a more vibrant, intense color. It takes a little bit longer to cook than cabbage, but if you cut it up fine, it works out just great. Um, so, you know, and, and really any, you know, any dish you can, you can make a kind of sauerkraut with collard greens, right? A fermented, shredded sort of cabbage uh, preserve type deal, right? There's lots of things, you, basically anywhere you would use cabbage, you can use collard greens. Um, I just find they're much more uh, easy to grow. There's a slug right there. Just, just proof that these aren't drenched in pesticides. There's a slug right there eating <laughs> my plants, right? I mean, I, I just give them, when I see uh, excessive damage, like this, this evening I noticed this inner leaf's really been attacked bad. So I might give them a blast um, this evening. Uh, I haven't used any slug bait. I just give them a little shot with the Safer Zendal. Seems to do enough, right? Um, and it, that, again, that's another one of those things where if you spray it in the evening, uh, by 10 o'clock the next day with the sunlight and the morning dew and all that sort of stuff, it's basically broken down. It breaks down to, you know, other chemical constituents that are benign in the soil. It does not toxify and build up in your soil over time. It's just not designed that way. It's designed with the organic garden in mind. Uh, anyway, the whole point of this video wasn't a plug for these various products. The point is to explain that uh, collard greens are a great alternative to cabbage. If you're finding pests to be a problem with your cabbage and you're finding various measures for controlling the pests are not working. Uh, maybe if you've never tried collard greens before, these are flash collards, that's the, the, the variety. Um, but, um, and, you know, it's the only variety I've, I've tried, but I'm happy with it. They grow well, they've got, you know, they're just great, successful, and this is about as many as I want, right? They freeze, you can blanch and freeze them, save them for later. They're just great to have. So a very versatile plant, collard greens, if you, you know, uh, a lot of people, especially where I live, cabbage is a traditional plant. Um, collard greens are more of a, you know, sort of southern, um, southern United States sort of dish. Um, but they're great. And there's collard green dishes you can make for southern cooking. They're awesome. <laughs> That's one of my favorite meals. You know, fried chicken, collard greens, <laughs> rice and rice and beans, you know, like red beans and rice sort of thing. I just love all that stuff. I love that style of cooking. Can't get enough of it. Um, anyway, I think I've talked about this enough. So yeah, having problems with cabbage, try collard greens. I don't think you'd be sorry, you might not go back. Hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, wanna help support everything I'm doing here? Check out my sponsors, Vessi Seeds and Safer's Gardening Products. For Vessi's, go to their website, vessies.com, and use my coupon code, GAVS22, and you'll get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in your order, and there's no oversized items in your order. Check out the description box of this video for details. Uh, for Safer's products, Woodstream products, you can buy all the things I use in my gardens, Slug and Snail Killer, BTK, and all. You can buy that from Vessi's, or you can go to their websites uh, for a much wider range of products to solve just about any kind of problem that you can imagine uh, with high quality natural ingredients like oils from seeds and flowers and stuff like that. Uh, for, if, you, if you're in Canada, go to woodstreambrands.ca, and as long as your order is over $69, you get free shipping. If you're in the United States of America, then go to saferbrand.com and as long as your order is over $45 US, you'll get free shipping from them. So yeah, if you want to help support the channel and the podcast and they sell something you need, buy from them and that'll help support everything I'm doing here. Thanks a lot.